every unit in the Army gets tasked. Uh, we were tasked with Land Warrior. When I came to 4-9 and they told me that we were going to equip with Land Warrior, and, and I was like, oh God, I don't, I don't want to have anything to do with this. The system consists of uh, several parts, a computer system that has a GPS uh, repeater uh, along with a two gigabyte hard drive. Uh, it's basically uh, does the same thing as your home computer does. It has a radio system that is a uh, data sent signal over the radio. It has a helmet uh, mounted display. It is a uh, two inch screen that is mounted on your helmet that flips down uh, over your eye. The two inch screen represents a, what you would see a normal 17 inch monitor and it also has a uh, GPS system that's uh, built into it. The system itself uh, gives you four distinct advantages, which normal soldiers do not have. It gives you situational awareness. This allows you to see all blue forces that are in your area of operation. It gives you map and imagery. It also allows the leaders to uh, be able to change graphics uh, while on the move and it also gives us voice and text messaging capabilities. If you look traditionally at the three questions, of where am I, where, where are my friends, and where are the enemy, uh, this provides me near real-time knowledge of where I'm at and where all of my units are at, which provides me better ability to command and control the movement of the unit in the field and also prevent fratricide and also determine what amount of force I want to bring to bear on, on known or suspected enemy locations at a given time. Well, we started fielding Land Warrior approximately a month ago, uh, on the 15th of May of 2006, and uh, so far it's going well. We're, we're pretty optimistic. I don't know who ever put it on a soldier's back, the original configuration, and had him walk around with it because it appeared to me designed in a vacuum, um, as in, well, we need all these things to make the system run, but we don't look at, we need all these things to make the system run on the back of a soldier who's, you know, walking a street, hopping a wall, going through a door, or coming out of a hatch in a strike. I'll tell you what, I, I came to 4-9 right after they started the limited user test, which was basically the very beginning of the program for 4-9, and I hated it. I wanted absolutely nothing to do with it. And they pushed it on us really hard, and it, eight months of pretty serious, painful, training with the system and we, we just wanted it to go away. We didn't want anything to do with it. I personally was not in favor of having Lamb War, but I was willing to give it a shot. I, I think the technology is the next logical step in the development of land warfare. I think the technology is undeniable. It's coming in some form or another. It's clear as we're going through some of the testing of the system, it's still in the, its infancy stages and there's some problems with it, but there's a lot of things it does well. Uh, but it never gets better unless someone's there to test it, develop and identify deficiencies and allow the engineers to get feedback from the field to, cr uh, to create solutions to that. So uh, that's kind of why we're here, so we can help make it better. So generations down the road, it's you know, only yay big and weighs nothing and does everything you want it to. It'd be easy if we just built stuff without ever using soldiers ever, and we just have engineers designing stuff and we just hand it over to the soldiers. But it's far better if we give it to soldiers, get their feedback, make changes. So using soldiers early on in the process rather than later benefits us from a developer standpoint. You're the first unit in the United States Army to be equipped with this kit. You're the point of the spear. You're going to tell us what's good about it, what's bad about it. You're going to tell us what the tactics, techniques, and procedures are. You're going to rewrite Army doctrine. Huh? Huh? You're going to rewrite the way we fight. They displayed the system, gave us a rundown of it, and I'll be honest, I was a, I was a fan right away uh, of what it, of the idea of Land Warrior, what it could do, what I was seeing in the display. Uh, the physical characteristics of it, you know, people were just awful. Ergonomically, it was not right. We actually didn't do a very good job at first. We arrived in what we call a belt concept where soldiers wore the system around their waist and that was a no-go from the start from them and they directed that we needed to change where everything went which is of course was a hard thing to do because we sat around and that's a that's a big deal a lot of people didn't want to make changes it was what it was but we we did do that but you know the the people who make it and the people who are providing it uh they were awesome you know they worked with us really hard to get get it the way we wanted it you know uh, out of the way of the soldier we didn't want to see land warrior we didn't want to see it we wanted it to be gone inside our vests or inside our equipment. So we worked real hard towards getting to that. Thank you.
The decision to, to take land warrior to combat, which I made, was, was a very big decision, and one that I did not take lightly. It also wasn't a unilateral decision, um, as, as most of my decisions are not as a, as a battalion commander. Of course, there's a lot of important feedback uh, mechanisms that I use, and most importantly is, is my subordinate leaders and soldiers. And I, and I asked them, um, I said, what do you think? When they asked us, do you want to take it? I, unequivocally, yes. Absolutely, yes. You know, just let me get it there and then I'll, I'll figure it out from there. There was a lot of grumbling. Ah, well, you know, we're not, ah, we'll bring it, we're not gonna wear it. I, I was a pretty big advocate against the, the whole Land Warrior program when, it, when we found out we were gonna take it. And I was like, oh man, it's another 10 pounds of stuff I'm never gonna turn on, you know, and uh, boy was I wrong when we got to country. Soldiers patrol the city of Tarmia, Iraq. The patrol is like many throughout Iraq as coalition and Iraqi forces work to bring security to the country. We operate in a town called Tarmia, uh, which is located 20, 30 kilometers north of Baghdad and was kind of a hotbed for Al Qaeda uh, activity. When we arrived, I think it's safe to say that the enemy controlled the area. I mean, we, we were walking into their turf. When we hit ground, and we, we flipped that system on from, from day one. It was like, I don't want to do a mission without this. This is, this is just as important as my, as my weapon, as my nods, the, uh, the ability to provide situational awareness on a battlefield, and especially a, uh, a battlefield of today where it's unconventional warfare. You, you can't replace that. It's irreplaceable. Get it? We don't get lost. Okay, it cuts down the, t the, the mission planning time, the mission, the mission execution time, because you don't have to stop and look at things, uh, maps, and you don't have to talk on the radio as much. You can see where you're going, you can see what you're doing. It makes us faster, more lethal, and it also, it gives, you know, leaders that a team leader and up level confidence in what they're doing. One of our first combat situations, one of, our, one of our platoons was in contact. They were having an ambush, and the squad leader had positioned his forces, and immediately as part, when they set in uh, their position, uh, they were attacked by a numerically superior force. And uh, because of the land warrior system, uh, the squad leader was able to give digital commands uh, to his, uh, his uh, team leaders who were separated by outside of direct vision what they were and they were able to effectively engage in, a, in, a, in an ambush position basically kill uh, or uh, wound 19 of the 25 personnel that we identified and it was because of the technology and we hadn't we we hadn't realized you know, it took us to the next level in an asymmetrical fight where there is not a linear direction of advance it's phenomenally useful uh, I mean it's it's great for being able to track where people are and understanding the situation, developing the demographics, and understand your environment a lot better. There were a lot of things that we suggested to the engineers that, that hey, we need to have some, some ability to mark things, and it's going to make us money. And it did. And they, you know, all of a sudden, bam, they came up with it. Um, and that's, that's really how we operated. We used those, those marking tools all the time all the time. Uh, the glow sticks that uh, you, you buy in the hardware stores, uh, we took that technology and made it virtual. And we're able to quickly, when a situation arises, we're, we're able to quickly drop those chem lights which have certain meanings and up, uh, attack the enemy. I'm going to toot my own horn here, that was actually my idea. But uh, the chem light, it's a visual uh, signal. Um, I just thought that we should take it to the next level. We've got verbal communications, we've got visual communications, and we have digital communications. We see, I can see in my, head, my heads up display what's going on around the battlefield, but I'm still looking with my naked eye for that chem light or for a verbal call over the radio or face to face with the leader on the ground. The next logical step in my opinion was just to start marking digitally on our maps. There's no longer the wait for a leader to make the, make the call and say, hey, what's your location? Are you in position yet? Because the leader now, the platoon leader, the platoon sergeant, or the company commander, myself, 
or the battalion commander can pull down his helmet mounted display, look into it and see that everybody is moving into position, in position and ready to execute. So all that time that has elapsed in the past of communi FM communications has really reduced. But we drive right up to the target, we knew where we were going and the guys were getting off the trucks and running to these targets, which is the way it has to be. It has to be quick and down and dirty. And we, we snatched a lot of really um, important people. I think in a month between July and August, we caught 58% of the entire brigade's targets. And that was just one company of guys. Um, because we were able to use these icons, we were able to use the Land Warrior. Um, it was doing its job. And it did, it made us much faster. And um, flash to bang time was significantly reduced. Uh, I'm a mortar guy. So uh, having something that's on my body that I don't have to pull out a map, a compass, uh, God forbid, a, a plotting board, you know, and, and try to, to work math to uh, get my mortar rounds downrange. I've got a measurement tool on my heads-up display that gives me distance in meters and an azimuth right to where I want to fire. So if I had to, I could hasty lay my gun and fire within 30 to 40 seconds. You know, when I think of land mortar, the stuff that helped us out was the, the navigation system was the most, the most important thing. Because it was my job to navigate and get to the right house. To hit the first house, oh, that's not the right house. Hit the next one, oh, that ain't the right one either. Or walking down the street with a piece of paper and, you know, at nighttime that has the map that you're supposed to be working at and looking at the houses, and it could be a year old or six months old, and then looking at the houses and the kind of, uh, yeah, it kind of looks like it, let's go. I had a lot more confidence in, in where I was going, so. It allowed us to travel at night, blacked out, to the target, to that house, front door, and then go to where we needed to go, you know, to avoid stumbling around in the dark. We actually got off a helicopter one time and a squad was probably about 500 meters away from the actual objective area of the house, but the house was surrounded by about 75 different houses with a maze to go through and the squad leader plotted on the map, we had the exact grid, we knew where we needed to go. He just ran and literally full speed, that squad ran through the maze in like 30 seconds. They were out the house and took it down before anybody could react. And when he, did, he took down the target, he captured the individual, he ran out the opposite direction, called the helicopters as he was coming in, got picked up and flew away. We went back the next day uh, to see what the reaction was of the people and they said, you know, we heard something, but you know, the only thing we knew is that the terrorist leader that was in our area is gone. Within a few months of being in combat operations, um, you know, soldiers, soldiers, even those who had been skeptics, were saying, this stuff really works. It's really powerful. I don't know. It was like in the span of like two or three months, it just went from, you know, zero to hero kind of type thing. And we used it every day. And I went from being one of its biggest um, naysayers to being one of its biggest supporters. I've got to tell you now that I can't see fighting without it. Uh, it is a phenomenal system. A lot of times it was the platoon leader uh, or that squad leader putting an enemy icon on that land warrior system. And as soon as he does that, within three seconds, everybody has that. They all know where it is. So now, where's he shooting from? I don't know. Where's he shooting? Can you see? Can you see? And this is all the radio traffic that we had when we were in Afghanistan. You didn't have that. Boom, there he is. All right. First squad, bound left. Third squad, you know, base, uh, base of fire. You know, second squad, stand by. And then you saw those guys, boom, boom, boom. You know, 30 seconds to a minute. You're still going to talk on the radio. You, you're, you just have to. You know, there's no substitute for the human voice when it comes to portraying urgency, calmness, or, you know, any of those gamut of human emotions that might come over the radio. Because you'll hear it and you'll know. However, there is a substitute for a lot of the this is where I need you to go kind of thing. Mark it on the map. As close to as approximately, you know, you, you've got the data, you mark it on the map. Do you see that yellow chem light? Roger, sir. Assault that building. That's where the target is. I got it. So a team leader is the leader of the smallest maneuver element. So when that team maneuvered and you saw that blue icon on your heads up display, you knew there was guys in relative proximity of that of that blue icon. So when you orientated your weapons that way, you knew where he was and it was safe to fire. So we didn't have a single fratricide event the entire time we were in Iraq. The, the friction of two units coming together under fire is extremely dangerous. And with Land Warrior, I'm not saying this happens every time, but 
Um, it allows the unit that's out of contact to see the enemy, his approximate location, the exact location of the friendly forces that are engaging him, and he can maneuver out of contact, meaning he's not under direct fire. And then when he does come under direct fire, he does have a bearing on the target. And that allows those two units to maintain that separation, you know, so that the friction of combat uh, doesn't result in either fratricide or confusion or slowing down the assault, with the most important thing. And, uh, and, and we get a better understanding of the enemy picture. If you're under strength, Land Warrior compensates by allowing less people to cover more ground. We would show up at an organization that didn't have a system. The, the reaction was always the same. My God, why can't I have one of those? The things that it's given us, the tools, the confidence, it's irreplaceable. It would be, it would be a big step back and I think that you know, it's a snowball and it's rolling to the point now, we, the, the fifth striker brigade combat team from Fort Lewis is, the entire brigade is being fielded the system. The, the next generation of Land Warrior looks really cool. I think that the technology is, uh, is increasing and the system is getting lighter, uh, which is really important to the guys who are wearing it. I take a lot of pride in telling them that the, the next system that goes to the 5 tube for a brigade was not designed by our office, it was designed by the soldiers of the 4-9. It, it didn't come from us, so the smaller, lighter, all-in-one box configuration came from them. You see all this stuff now about future combat systems and, you know, tactical internet, and they're doing it all with vehicles. Okay, well the vehicles are great, and you see all these whiz-bang things. It's the guys on the ground that are going to get the job done. And if you give the guys on the ground the tools to be faster and, you know, more accurate and more lethal, okay, that's, that's where we need to go. And I think, that, I think that enough people have gotten the point now and have seen it that they won't go back. It brings a lot more than just a system with maps, graphics, communication platforms. It, it, it starts to meld a new mindset into that unit. And, and, uh, and that's almost as valuable as, as the hardware package it provides itself. I think we as a military and as an army and the way we fight this war have determined that digital situational awareness and position lo location and reporting is essential to what we do. The power that comes from the sharing information enabled by networks, that always ended for, the, for soldiers as soon as you dismounted off of vehicles up until Land Warrior. Now with Land Warrior, you can extend that uh, capability to dismounted operations. And honestly, dismounted operations, particularly in Iraq and the counterinsurgency operations that we're working on now, is where we do it. That's where we make our money. It's not about guns, you know, and bullets and, you know, bombs and frags and whatever. Where we beat the enemy is in communications. You know, communications is more important than any rifle. If you can't talk, you can't get the rifle to bear on the enemy. You can stumble around in the dark until you just happen to meet a bad guy. But without good communications, situational awareness, you can't effectively, timely uh, eliminate him. Now, not in a week, not after he's done two more IEDs. The infantry, in my opinion, will undergo uh, a revolution with this. It's got to be this way. It has, we have to do this. Every man knows the mission. Every man knows where he's at. Every man knows where he's going. He's got a display of every target that's inside of it. He can communicate, you know, and the hire high, can see him. That's where linking the guys together, you know, is exponentially greater than the number that's on the ground. They can prosecute the fight much more rapidly, uh, much more precisely, and, um, and just make better decisions that upon which the lives of their soldiers hang and upon which uh, the success of the mission depends.